Welcome to Husky Hockey Insider Podcast. Uh, I'm very happy to be joined uh, by by the St. Cloud State men's hockey captain, Spencer Meyer. Uh, Spencer, uh, last, well, uh, actually it was early. Spence, when was it? Last week now that uh, you, you came with your, your decision? It, was, it came to the decision you're coming back for fifth season? Yeah, yeah. Well, first first off, thanks for having me on. This is uh, this is great. And But yeah, la- last week, um, I just kind of made it o- official, I guess you could say. Um, but I always, you know, right after the season, I even, you know, sit it, sitting in, in the uh, locker room, you know, I knew that I, I wanted to come back. So um, I'm just glad it worked out and, um, you know, looking at, you know, going through uh, deals and stuff like that. I just, I really just want to bet on myself for next year. And I know that th- this team can do some really good things next year. And um, I want to bet on myself and hopefully get an NHL contract ne- next year. And I think uh, you want to be overprepared rather than underprepared, you know, going to the next level going to the next level and I think that applies for really everything you do in life and um I just want to have a really good uh, a, a really good summer of tr- of, tr- of training and um have a great year next year so yeah happy to be here yeah uh Tim Wright uh, who I know that uh, you, you've, you've known for a long time and I've yep. obviously known Tim for a long time he had, had, has a few questions uh, so well but as I was telling you beforehand uh, we I, I got a bunch of submitted questions so I want to make sure I get Perfect. all these guys uh questions answered before uh anything that I, I need to get yeah. to but no oh, yeah for sure let's do it yeah, uh, he says, uh, I'm, I'm sure you all asked, but I'd be interested as to what the pros and cons uh, Spencer weighed uh, when making it, his decision. Uh, obviously, there there are positives on you know to any either side that you would have taken on that, uh, Spence. Yeah. Uh, what, what, give, give us your version, I guess, of uh, what the pros and cons were for, for you. Yeah, well, I guess uh, pros for coming back, um, get to play at, St. Cloud State University for one more year, which is the greatest place on on earth. So uh, that's definitely a big pro. Uh, and then also you get to come back and you have a culture and a coaching staff that you know takes care of each player and really wants to set them up for success at the next level. So you get another year of really trying to Im- improve your game and then it kind of goes back to what I said, you know, you want to be over-prepared than under-prepared. Um, and sometimes it's hard to be honest with yourself. Um, I think uh, my skating is a little bit under-prepared for the next level than uh, what I what I want it to be. Um, so I really want to have a good year of off-season training and really work on my skating and really get it to be able to play at that next level. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a pro is being able to uh, work on on your game for one more year and develop and hopefully be over prepared um, for the next level, if you would. Um, and then, you know, it goes by so fast. It goes by like I can remember sitting in my dorm room, um, you know, East 317 with Sam Hanches, you know. Um, that was my roommate and it goes by now we're seniors. I'm going to graduate this May and he's going to play with the wild, you know? Um, but you get to come back and play with your best buddies. You know, you get to play with your best friends and, you know, college hockey is truly something special. It's an in environment. That's absolutely great. You know, so you get to come back and do that. And, um, you know, there's not a lot of, going to the cons, I guess, there's not a lot of cons of coming back to St. Cloud State. Like, you, you, there's no cons, I guess. But I guess if, you know, you were to sign an AHL deal, uh, like I said, my goal is to get an NHL deal next year, ho- hopefully. But if I were to sign, I guess, um, you know, you get to move to that professional level and get your foot in the water, I suppose. Yep. Um, start playing at that level. Um, um, I guess that's, you know, one thing um and then you know but other than that i mean i'm like i said i'm i've always been i'm completely okay and completely pumped and excited to come back so you know the, 
the cons there are no there are no cons you know <laughs> i don't know there's no cons the, 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 you know the cons on the pro side that would be you know all, all you know some of the things you're mentioning right i mean it's leaving all your buddies it's it's leaving uh you know a, a situation where you're obviously extremely comfortable and, and right. feel very much at home and right. and, and you know I, 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 i'm not trying to speak for you but i mean the, oh, yeah. the, 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 the big thing that i've heard from from a lot of guys and i've heard this from you as well i mean you only get one chance at this right yeah. i mean you right. turn pro and it, you know there's no going back yeah even with you know it's it's such a business once you turn pro yeah. um that like i said you want to be over prepared rather than under prepared and you know yeah cons would be you would you know you'd lose your friends you'd you know, you'd have to start, you know, going into that business and not, it's a great business. Like that's my goal is to be in that business, to be in the NHL and stuff like that, but, um, and to play professional hockey for as long as I can, you know, that's my goal, but you can do that, you know, barring an injury, but that, you know, that's, you know, you can't, you can't decide whether you get hurt or not, you know, that's just fl fluky stuff that you have to deal with if it happens, you know, but, you know, college hockey is only here for four years and I'm lucky enough to have a fifth and, you know, that next level is there for, you know, however, however long enough you're lucky enough to play and stay healthy. So uh, that that's the plan. And like you said, St. Cloud is, you know, it's always, you know, Gibby, Mike Gibbons used to say that it's always sunny and 75 in St. Cloud. So why, why, why wouldn't you want to be here? You know, <laughs> That's such a great give me saying. There's so many yeah. of them. There's so many of them that are so wonderful. Yeah. But uh, another question from Tim. He, he says, uh, "What what what kind of pro opportunities are out there for you? Uh, you know, I, I I know from talking with you. I mean, it sounded like uh, you had some AHL offers. Were there kind of a handful of opportunities? I guess along those lines. Or yeah, it was just. I mean, just talking with family ad, ad advisor and stuff like that. It was just, you know, some AHL um, contracts, um, you know, and then there's some with like, I don't even, I don't know how this all works. That's why you have a, fa a family ad advisor, you know, like I just, you know, you want, in my opinion, just being honest, you want, you want the teams to come to you rather than having your family advisor kind of reach out to them you know right. what I'm saying? like you yep. kind of want to be wanted um and there's you know there's some interest for a ahl and stuff like that but um like i said my goal is nhl contract next year uh that's my goal and you know if it doesn't happen um that hopefully that a ahl in interest will still be there you know so uh yeah well well one th one thing I, I, I've known about you, Spence, for many, many years is that uh, we, we don't have to worry that you're not going to work for it. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I distinctly yeah. remember when you were playing for the Fargo Force and in conversation with Kerry Eads and Kerry said that they actually had to tell you to get off the ice yeah. <laughs> a bit more because yeah. you're out there all the time. Yeah, well, we always, you know, junior hockey is, you know, you, I took the year off of school before going into college. So it's literally just hockey. And I'd go in in the morning before practice and I'd skate and work out. And then I'd have practice. And yeah, one day Carrie Eads was like, and you know, Carrie is absolutely a great guy. He's a great guy. He's a great coach. Uh, me and him still talk and he's, he's so caring about his players, but he could sometimes be a scary dude. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I just remember him being like, hey, Spencer, come with me. And I was like, oh, no, like, oh, geez, what's going on? Like, am I getting traded? Am I getting sent down to the NHL? Like, what, what's going on here? And I was, you know, playing pretty good at the time. So, like, I was like, no, they, like, they can't be right. Like, what's going on? So I get in his office and I sit down. And he's like, yeah, you got to stop doing extra work. You got to stop going on the ice. And I was just like. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, I never got really, I never, and it's not like I got yelled at, but I yeah. never got told to not work, you know, work and stuff. But, um, but he had, you know, he had a good point. Junior hockey is a 60 game 
regular season and you know he just wants the best for you and wants to make sure you're still fresh towards the end of the season and stuff like that so but yeah that was kind of funny funny story well and, and it worked out pretty well you guys ended up yeah. winning the clark cup out of the whole deal so i mean yeah. uh, it, yeah. he he knew what he was talking about, right? Exactly. Yeah, he knew what he's talking about, and he usually does. Uh, Tim, uh, can t- Tim has a uh, a laundry list here. Uh, he goes with oh, was, was was further college education a factor? You and I, uh, when you and I talked uh, last week, uh, and actually you just mentioned it, uh, you're finishing up your undergraduate degree. I, uh, business or is it business finance? I'm trying to remember what a uh, business finance. Business finance, and uh, you, you told me that uh, you're going to be working on a master's degree, correct? I mean, was it, yeah. did that play into it a little bit? I mean, you get a little bit more education too out of the deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's just say if I would have gotten a NHL deal this year, yeah, um, I probably wouldn't be yeah coming back. Uh, so the school's not like a huge factor. Uh, but it does work out in the sense that I want to work on my game and I want to, you know, take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. Um, and it actually works out that I can also take my education to the next level too, because I'm going to graduate this year with a business finance degree. Uh, and then I haven't thought about it too much, but I'm, I plan on, I guess, taking a, um, getting uh, my uh, business um why am I blanking here? Your um, MBA or? Yeah, my MBA. That's what it's called. So yeah. I plan on doing that. I plan on getting an MBA or starting that pro uh, that program. So it's going to, it's going to work out. And, you know, yeah, I love, I love, I love it here. The school's great. And um, yeah, so it's going to work out for where I can start the uh, master's program for business. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think Brendan Bush, he's in the, in, in the MBA program already. And uh, I know Seamus Donahue was, well, Seamus was getting his master's not in his, his MBA. Uh, Fitzy with uh, Kevin Fitzgerald was also, I think, working on his MBA. So, I mean, there are there are a handful of you guys that have been yeah. have gotten in, gone that route anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, yeah, and they all say good things. So, um, I'm not too worried about it. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, I'm not sure what Micah Miller is going to do. Um, I know. <laughs> I know last time you interviewed him, he said he was sick at school, uh, uh, but I'm guessing he'll roll into that master's program with me. So that would be nice to have him with me as well. No, I've, I heard through the grapevine that you, you guys had some fun with that. that you guys were kind of ribbing. Now, Micah is typically extremely quiet and I, I had, I had to, I had to quote him because you just don't hear Micah say stuff like that. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and it, but he was being honest, right? Yeah. But I, I would imagine you guys had a little bit of fun yeah. with him with that, huh? Oh yeah, I mean that's all you can ask for for you, Mick, right? You want the honest truth, and he yeah. he gave it to you, you know. Uh, but yeah, we had some fun with that. Uh, it's just funny because he's it's, you know, Micah is shy, especially, um, you know, around. But he's not he's not shy around the guys, but he's yeah. you know shyer around like media and you know other people per se but he's one of the nicest guys i've ever met and just just seeing that quote and seeing yeah i'm kind of sick of school to be honest but <laughs> one more year one more year won't hurt i guess so um it was just kind of funny we all had some laughs about it and yeah. uh we'll continue with the tim's litany of questions here uh he says uh, are there collegiate goals that you haven't reached yet that uh you know you you still you were mentioning you know obviously getting from a personal standpoint, getting better at skating, uh, yeah. you know, working on your skating a little bit more, but uh, other things, I guess, that come to mind, I guess, along those lines or. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think every year as a player, um, you know, the Hobie Baker talk comes up, you know, with being uh, one of the ones nominated for it, you know, and then you have the NCHC um, all conference teams, Mm-hmm. stuff like that and then you have the all american award and to be honest with you it'd be great to have you know it'd be great to achieve some of those um i think um you know i can really take my game to the next level and hopefully be st cloud state's go-to defenseman that they look to next year and you know play in all state situations and have a really good year and you know when you look at those awards and you don't get nominated for those awards it's uh it kind of puts a, it kind of lights a fire, you know, mm-hmm. uh, 
you want to prove people wrong. Not that I'm saying I think I should have been or whatever. There's a lot. There's a lot of great players who um, really deserved um, those on, those honors. I'm not saying I should have, um, but I want to. You know, my goal is to have a great summer and you know hopefully get some of those awards. Uh, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be very cool. Uh, let's see if he has other things here. Uh, he, he asked about uh, you know how much weight was uh, the hometown factor to say it well i mean obviously i mean you've you've lived in the area for other than the season in in fargo i mean you've you've pretty mm -hmm. much lived in this area your whole whole life i mean uh, I, I would imagine there's there's got to be a little bit of that too oh yeah i mean especially you know from my parents side they were loving it, you know because <laughs> yeah. they're right here and they get to come up to all the games and stuff like that but um, after I, I love it here. Like I love it in St. Cloud. I love it in Sartell. It's, you know, it's, it's great. Like I, I have no complaints if, you know, I'm living at my college house right now, but let's say I'm out of groceries or something, Mac, I just go home and my parents cook me some up to eat. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty great. Honestly, I'm just living it. And, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's great. And, um, yeah, I got no complaints, man. I got no complaints. All right uh zach okabe actually chimed in here and he, he right. asked the question he says uh uh, uh what, what do you like to cook at home he says wow. wow well i'm i don't know if people know this but i'm kind of a picky eater um not in the sense like just like not that i don't eat but i'm just picky about some things um but uh i'm a big meat guy like meat okay. potatoes, you know. Um, I love to cook a good steak, uh, you know, steak, burgers. Um, you know, I make really good potatoes. I s slice them up, put them in a cast iron, put them on the grill. Um, I make really good potatoes. And uh, other than that, you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm on the grill, you know, I'm on the grill. You You're know, a grill I'm, guy. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a griller. Um, and then I guess... I don't know. I guess we've all been there in, in, in college, you know, you grill, you run out of that at groceries and it seems like you go out to eat for the next two or three days before you get groceries, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah, we got that. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, I, I got a couple of questions from go Huskies woo to pass along to you. And I, I actually like the, the first one a lot because you grew up in the area and I know what a big St. Cloud state fan you were. Yeah. Uh, he, he asks, uh, who are your favorite Huskies growing up? Uh, you know, are there, I know, I know who one of them is, but uh, you know, who are some, of, some guys that, you know, uh, you know, just growing up that you really enjoyed watching them play. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, I'm guessing the one you know is John Swanson. Yeah. Um, he always flipped me a puck when I was down by the glass every game. He always would flip me a puck. And it's actually kind of funny. I'm actually going to the wild game uh, with him tonight. So uh, that'll be kind of fun. But I always grew up watching. My sister always really liked Garrett Rowe. Um, so we always watched Garrett Rowe. Uh, that's kind of where I got my number nine from because uh, 26 wasn't available at, at the time when I came in. So I took nine kind of for uh for my sister's love with garrett Rowe or whatever but, um garrett Rowe was always a good one R ryan lash i think in that same mm -hmm. uh garrett raboyne uh, i watched raboyne a lot um who else uh oh i'm trying to think there's a defense there's another defenseman i used to watch all the time uh i watched you know ethan prowl is more uh of a recent one uh yeah. i watched you know kind of i was probably in bantams at, at the time or peewees or whatever but um i watched all the guys kevin gravel i watched gravel uh, yeah i mean i know like i know all of them you know i yeah. watched i went to a lot of games i know a lot and nick jensen i would imagine uh, being yep, a nick jensen, yep nick jensen was really good um oh uh this is a good one. Uh, he was, people loved him around here, but uh, he had the long hair, uh, Hep. Chris Hep, yep. Chris Hep. They'd always be like, Hep, 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 Hep. Yep. Uh, that was always funny. He was a second. tough guy. He was a really tough guy, yeah. Uh, but he was, he was good, too. I used to always watch him, too. But, yeah, I watched a lot of guys. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I was going to ask you where, where the nine came from, and now we know. I mean, it, it, was, it, it was actually kind of an ode to your sister then. Yeah, basically. So, well, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, Minkle called me, our equipment guy, um, in, in the summer before I came in, and he was going over equipment and stuff like that. And then he asked me what number I wanted, and he went through the list of what was available, and nine was there. And um, I picked nine, and... I picked nine because, well, I think, I think my dad wore nine sometime in high school or whatever. And then Maddie watched Garrett Rowe um, all four years he was here uh, and absolutely loved them. Um, so the, the nine was kind of always in our family. So I picked nine, but I didn't even know this, but I got home um, like a few weeks later. Um, I told my parents I had number nine. They were all excited, you know. But my mom went through, must have went through my old closet or something. And she found a jersey that said Spencer on the back. And it was a Husky jersey and it had the number nine on it. And I had no clue I had that jersey. So it was kind of crazy how it all worked out. But uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think I remember seeing that photo. It's a, it's a yeah. fun old photo of you uh, yeah. wearing it and, and, yeah. and stuff. Uh, uh, another question uh, that that uh, Gowalski's Wu had for you, and I, and I like this question too, uh, you, you know, talk, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the, the culture here uh, at St. Cloud State. Now, you're going to be, uh, I think, we, I think if I've done the, the math right, uh, it's going to be back-to-back three-year captains, right? I mean, it was Jimmy Schultz for three years, and now it's going to be uh, you for three years. Uh, just talk a little bit about, you know, what, you know, the, the culture that's kind of created, I guess, uh, you know, that, that situation with, with, with you guys. Yeah, well, we had Jimmy Schultz for three, and then we actually had Jack and Sean for one. There we go. Yes, that's yeah. pretty, yes. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I mean, this culture is amazing. I mean, I I don't, you know, some people think you just say that because you have to say that, yeah. but you, I mean, it's the truth. Like, I mean, I've been on, you know, teams that you know it's not even near like this. You know, ever you know, some teams you have people playing for themselves, playing for their contract. You know don't care if they win, lose, just care if they have points, you know, but that's not near what this culture is, is we all, you know, I want the fans to know that we all put in the work every, every day to be as best as we can be. And yeah, there's some off nights or some off games, but the culture here is we, every day we want to pass somebody else, you know, we want to be the best team that we can be. And, um, it's everybody's bought in, everybody's, um, you know, a good person or, or, or around town, you know, I think that's um, what this culture is about is not only being a really good hockey program, but being really good people outside of the rink. You know, I think that's really Im- important to our culture um, is, you know, we want to interact with the fans. We want to, you know, we want to, you know, be there for the kids. You know, if we had, if we had a thousand pucks, we could flip every kid at a puck, but you know, that's not, that's not the case, but um, we just want to be good people and, you know, a really good hockey program. And right now that's what we have. And I guess for me, it's just, you know, trying to lead by example. And, you know, I got to learn from Jimmy. I got to learn from Jack or Sean, you know, and those two guys were huge for me and they taught me a lot and, you know, just carrying on what they, um, you know, the culture that um, they kind of started, um, or not, I shouldn't say started, there's people before them that started it too, but yeah. that they kind of taught me how to, you know, lead and be, you know, keep that culture and just make sure that every day is a, a blessing and we just want to get better every day. And that's, you know, that's kind of our culture model. Yeah, uh, another, another one of his... Uh... Gowalski's Blues questions is uh, what did what'd you learn about being a captain from Jimmy Schultz? Uh, you know, a, a lot of people when they, you know, the, the guys that have played with, with Jimmy, I mean, they, they speak extremely highly of, of him and, and his leadership. What are things, I guess, that you took away from playing and, and maybe learned, I guess, about leadership from him? Right. I think, you know, yeah, Jimmy's great. He was always great to me, but I think one of the things is that he was, he knew when to kind of, he knew when he needed to put his foot down 
mm-hmm. and kind of, you know, get the guys, you know, I don't want to say back in order, but he knew when to put his foot down and was like, hey, focus up. Let's go out of work. You know, this isn't a joke around day. This is a work day. Um, and then he knew when to kind of have that fun and have that fun on the rink and, you know, screw around a little bit and keep the room light. Like he had a really good balance of, you know, we're getting stuff done here, but we're also going to have fun with it, you know, and he had a really good balance with that. And um, he was really good with that. I mean, he was good with everything and he was good with, you know, with the, the, the young guys. Like, so I was a freshman when, he was a senior captain or whatever, and um, he would always make sure we're all set to go and um, we feel welcome because, uh, as most college hockey fans know, the freshman class is very important to your team, team success, and you want to make sure that they're bought in and they know the culture and they know um, that they're welcome here. And I think that's part of our culture is everybody's welcome. And, um, you know, I thought he did a really good job with that as well. What, what, yeah, and I'll just kind of follow up a little bit with that. Uh, you know, so so Jimmy's senior year, you get you guys have that terrific season. I mean, we won't talk about the the ending, but <laughs> but just an amazing season, thirty one wins. Uh, you know, I I think you guys went undefeated at home that season. I mean, you're loaded from kind of from top to bottom. The next season, obviously, uh, uh, there were a lot of guys that ended up finishing up their their careers, uh, you know, from an eligibility standpoint, uh, Jack ends up being the, the captain that next season. And it was a little bit bumpier, right? I mean, uh, but in the second half of that season, you know, things were starting to turn around. I mean, it ends up getting, you know, finished right as you guys are in Western Michigan or whatever, but <coughs> excuse me. But when you think about the leadership, I guess, uh, you know, from a leadership standpoint, to me, that's kind of the, the test of a leader, right? I mean, is you're, you're, you got some bumps in the road, and, and talk a little bit, I guess, about how, how maybe Jack kind of helped you guys through that and, and maybe helped, helped you guys have a good second half of that season. Right, for sure. I mean, they were both incredible leaders, incredible leaders. I can't say enough about them. Um, but Jack, you're right. Like each, each season has, you know, some have more than others. Like my freshman year, yeah, we won a lot, you know, but there's still ups and downs. And then... Mm-hmm. My second year, you know, we lost some guys, and um, but there was some ups and downs, and Jack just did a really good job of just kind of controlling the room, keeping the belief, um, and just, you know, he led by example, too. He went out there and gave it everything he had, and, you know, and that's what I try to do as well is give it everything I got, you know, each shift, each, each game, and some nights are better than others. That's how sports go, but Jack did a really good job of, you know what? I don't care if people think we're going to finish last in the conference. I don't care if people think we don't have a shot or not. You know, we're going to go out there and prove them wrong. And he had a really good ad- attitude about that. We all just kind of followed him. You know, we followed him and we bought out into him. And um, yeah, we were looking forward to that playoff run that year to prove a lot of people wrong, kind of like we did uh, last year, my junior year. No, we thought we would have made it that far, and we did. And, um, you know, it's un- unfortunate that that season got uh, postponed, um, mm-hmm. but it is what it is. But yeah, Jack was, he was great. He was awesome. Yeah. Along those lines, uh, Spence, uh, you know, this season, obviously, I mean, the, the, there were I, I probably as high of the expectations as any, any St. Cloud State team has, has ever had. There were up, obviously ups and downs uh, with, with the season. Uh, you, you look back and you guys played two one goal games with Mankato, <laughs> uh, one down there, which teams, uh, you know, don't, there are very few teams that can say they've won down in Mankato in the last four, four or yep. five years. Uh, you know, you got to get a win at Minnesota. I mean, the, the, you, you beat the tar out of North Dakota at home one, one, one day. Yep. I mean, the, there are a lot of, you know, really good moments and, uh you know and then obviously then there's some tough stretches for you guys how did you kind of you know go going through that season for you as 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 a leader i guess uh you what were things i guess that you tried to help help the guys through all that Uh, because there there there's a lot to go through there for for sure i think the coaching staff did a really good job and you know myself included just wanted to 
you know, there were so many ex expectations uh, put on us, uh, but you kind of want to realize that um, that can be a good thing. You know, that's a good yeah. thing. That means, you know, you're really, that means you're a really good team. You know, that means you have what it takes to win it. And, um, you know, but sometimes that can also, you know, that can also be really hard. Um, and it was, you know, we had a really good start to the year. Um, as, as you mentioned, we uh, beat Mankato, we beat Minnesota, beat Wisconsin, you know, we beat some good teams and, um, you know, beat North Dakota at home heavily one game. So we all knew we had that um, potential to be really good. And I think, you know, it's really disappointing because um, as a leader, you want to, you want to try and, you know, help your team go as far as possible. And obviously we lost first round. Um, and it's disappointing, you know, it really is. Uh, it hurts. It sucks. You look back, you're like, what could you do more? What could you, you know, what could have you done differently? Um, and you just want the best for your team and you want the best for your team, your teammates and you want to, Ultimately, you ultimately you want to win that national championship with the guys because you work so hard. And mm -hmm. you know, I think what if you know, some years you have it, some years you don't. Uh, and it was just hard, right? Like you had expectations, and it's not like we were scared of those. You know, we love we love those. It's just sometimes, um, you know, there's different outcomes for different years. It's not like we were a really good team this year. You know, really good and. You know, we played a great game against Quinni against Quinnipiac, and you know, sometimes the cards just don't fall your way. And um, but I love this group, and you know, um, it was a great year. You know, nonetheless, like yeah, we didn't accomplish what we wanted to, but it was a great year. And you know, it is hard because sometimes you sometimes you put too much on your shoulders. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that can affect your play as well. Um, and it, but it was just this group is all a bunch of leaders and we all went through it together and uh, we had some ups and downs but the way you handle those downs and those adversity type moments um, that's what it really makes you grow together and grow stronger uh, and I we were a really tight group a really tight group and yeah to the fans and to the media and stuff like that did we accomplish our goals no but we had a really good season I love this team and, you know, it's kind of a learning lesson to where, you know, you, sometimes you can't just expect to be good or be, you know, kind of expect to accomplish what you think you can. Uh, that's, that's college hockey. You know, it, every, every team is really good. And to be able to make the top 16 and be able to fight for a spot for the Frozen Four in the national, champ, champ, the national championship is still a big honor. And that, I mean, college hockey is, really really good so you gotta you know for the young guys this year um it's a good learning for them and for us moving on for next year you know we every, everybody knows how hard it is so you have to work you know you have to work that hard and you have to bring it every day and it's you know that's what i try to um uh, that's why you know that's my kind of leadership style is i try to bring it every day and lead by example and you know get the guys on board and so that's kind of you know yeah we had an off year but it's also a, learn, a, a, a learning lesson for our for our young guys and the team next year which I think will be really good um just that it takes it takes a lot you know it takes a lot to win and that's what we want to do yeah uh, uh along those lines uh, I, I know how much uh, like like you've been mentioning uh, I know how much you care about all your teammates and, and everything else uh I Fifth, you know, uh, David Rennick comes back for his fifth season. Uh, he specifically came back because he wanted to help you guys get back to a national championship. He was, uh, he gets sick. I mean, he, end, he ends up having pneumonia. He's in the hospital. Uh, for, for you as, as a teammate, I, I, I'm trying to, I, 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 I'm imagining even for you, I mean, you, your heart had to break a little bit for, for, for David that he wasn't able to play. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's pneumonia. He came back. He wanted to prove himself to the NHL scouts and he wanted to win a national championship. I mean, that we, 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 we all do, you know, we all want to, we all want that. And, you know, he worked his butt off all year um, and be able to not see him play 
it was sad. It was sad for sure. It was mm-hmm. absolutely sad. Um, but you know, we have all the confidence in the world and all three of our goalies um, and David, you know, they all, all three of our goalies this year worked so hard. Like, I don't know fans, we did goalie camps a lot. You know, they had our, our goalie coach came in a ton and worked with them every day. So they, they worked their butts off all year and um, just worked so hard. And David was just such a trooper about it. And he, you know, obviously I'm sure when he went home or, you know, in, in his ho- ho- hotel room on the road or whatever, I'm sure he was a bit sad, you know, that he couldn't mm-hmm. play, but he didn't bring that to the rink at all. You know, he just helped, he helped Jax and Joey be like, all right, you guys are up, you know, you guys are going, you guys are going. And um, he had such a good ad- attitude about it. And, um, he was great. I mean, we have all the beliefs in our goalies. And I just want to, I kind of want to say something to uh, the fans and like some people on Twitter, um, Jax, Jackson Caster is a great goalie. He is absolutely a stud of a goalie. Like when he is on, he is a stud, absolute stud. So don't, you know, we all have bad games. We all have bad games. You could ask Jackson a few of those goals. Would he want back? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but a few of the plays that we screw up expect on, on that game, we would want back too. I mean, all those, all those goals were not, you know, he is an absolute stud. We have the outright confidence in him. And I don't think it's right for fans to, you know, I know it happens in sports, but, uh, you know, some of the things that were said on Twitter was just not right. And me as a, a leader and a captain, s- s- seeing that just didn't make me very happy. Like um, everybody has bad days in life. Everybody have has bad days at work, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, he made some really good saves that game too. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's just, it shouldn't happen on Twitter or it shouldn't, you know, like that's what do they call it. Cyber bullying, you know, yeah. like that's, I mean, I get fans and sport in the sports world, they get into it and stuff like that. And that's what sports are about and fans and the interaction between fans and the players, but the negativity just doesn't need to happen. And, um, Everyone needs to know that Jackson Caster is an amazing goalie and we're going to be ready to go next year. And um, he's a great goalie. So don't let one game or one bad save or one tweet um, make you think otherwise. But so I just wanted to say that. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank, thanks so much, Spence. Uh, and, and thanks uh, so much for answering all, all the all the questions that were submitted and of course my questions uh spencer you're always uh, you always treat me first class and i always appreciate it and you're always willing to to uh you know if i pick up the phone and i reach out to spencer for people who don't know spencer always gets back to me if he doesn't he's so overly apologetic that, yeah. <laughs> that, that he feels bad about it but uh so i, I just want to say thank you in front of everybody else uh, for for yeah. all that you've done for me and uh congratulations again on coming back uh, for a fifth season yeah thank you and mick you do a great job and i'm I'm so pumped that you and this rink live thing is taken off and this is, it's just been great. And for all the fans out there, uh, I just want to let you guys know that Mick does a great job. Um, and if he's not covering something that you want him to cover, just let him know. And I'm sure he'll get right on it, but, uh, does great. And also a little plug for my hockey camp before oh, yeah, we go, I meant to mention that. Sorry. Um, sign up for my camp August 8th through the 11th, uh, at the Shields Iceplex in Sartell uh the kids are gonna have fun you know that's the main goal the kids are gonna have fun uh and i hope they learn a thing or two uh, uh, along the way and it's gonna be me and my teammates and some professional players too um just trying to teach the kids a thing or two and really have fun for a week you know let's have fun for a week let's learn some things and um it's you know it's gonna it's gonna be a fun time so, so. i i will uh, i will put put the link on on, on to your to your camp i believe it's spencer meyer hockey.com if i remember yep. correctly sure. so yep. people can check that out and uh anyway thank thanks again spencer uh, it's been the huskies hockey insider podcast i'm, I'm mccatton from the rink live and please check out all of our great content here on our website oops perfect thank you thank you